Yo, how's everybody doing? It's the Hawking Regime here, and today I'm coming at you guys with a week four recap video on my Playhouse uh, kind of online connected franchise league that I'm in right now. I'm using the Baltimore Ravens. If you guys just watched, uh, you know, probably most of you didn't, but we ended up just beating, um, or we ended up just playing our last game in week number four, even though the league advanced like an hour or two ago. Uh, I wish everybody would play as quick as I do because then we'd all be advancing very fast, but. Uh, that's not how things work in this league, and um, yeah, just played the Oakland Raiders and the commissioner, or one of the commissioners of the league in Mac Bean. Let's see if I can find it. It says right here, yeah, commissioner, this guy missed, and uh, Mac Bean 905, both commissioners of this league. Very tight game, and really an entertaining game, honestly. Um, probably one of the more entertaining games that I've had on my channel thus far, so check out that game if you guys are really interested in something uh, that's you know pretty entertaining when it comes to Madden. Um, it is a full stream, so I'm probably not going to go into edit and edit it, but the full, the whole game is really fun uh, to watch, at least. And to play, it was extremely fun, and it comes right down to the wire, and you see we come out with a victory, but a uh, really, really crazy game. And uh, the roster that I'm working with, the Baltimore Ravens, I did select this team, and I don't know if I knew this when I selected the team originally, and I forgot who I was talking to. I was talking to somebody who was uh, one of the main members of the league. I don't know if it was one of the commissioners or not, but uh, somebody was was giving me a team, and I uh, I don't know if they told me. I think they did tell me that Flacco was out for the first six weeks, and I just said, screw it, I'm going to take him anyways. And I don't really know why I did that, because I really should have taken a team that had a legitimate uh, starting quarterback. Now, Ryan Mallett isn't horrific by any stretch of the imagination, but my main problem, if you watch the game that I just played against Oakland in the live stream is the fact that I had a lack of concepts within my playbook because it was intended for a different league where you only have 120 plays in your playbook. And so I, I selected that as my playbook in this game, not realizing that I don't really have to use that and I can use a bigger playbook that has more concepts in it. And I just had no flood concepts in this 120 play playbook whatsoever. And I just could not stop this guy running cover three. One of the cool things you can do in this game, an online connected franchise mode, I don't think they had this last year, but this year, you can see the offensive and defensive profiles of your opponent. So the offensive tendencies, uh, you see 67% run, 33% pass. Not sure how accurate that really is. I guess it is fairly accurate, though. He did run the ball quite a bit with Latavius Murray and try, try to get him the football. Didn't pass a crazy amount, so I'd probably put that a little bit more towards 50, 59, like 41, probably some, something around there. Um, instead of, or 31, 50, 49, whatever, 59, 31, uh, but, or 41, geez, I'm 59, 41, is that right? Yeah, that's right, all right, uh, but, you know, not that much run heavy, but defensively, ah, man, cover three, 83% of the time, this was accurate, it was 100% of the time, <laughs> you ran cover three literally every single play, and I knew it, and I, you know, obviously I knew it, and, you might not have seen obvious if you're watching the stream because I was throwing picks. I threw five interceptions with Ryan Mallett. And it's not entirely Ryan Mallett's fault because I threw the same pattern, the same post, I think, like three times. And I think it was picked off every single time. Uh, it was so bad, really. I, I, I was just completely flustered. I didn't know what to do. Um, I could not run the football at all. And I don't even know how I won the game at the end of the day. But um, I did play extraordinarily well defensively, especially early on, and in enforcing turnovers. My defense just played their butts off, really. They got like three fumbles. It was insane. Um, but I just could not have any cover three beaters. I never, I didn't have any in my book, I felt like. Uh, no smash, no flood concepts to one side, flooding the whole field, um, or flooding one side of the field. Uh, you know, he would run cover three hard flat, and that would get me, you know, puzzled sometimes because I ended up throwing a pick six on a curl flat read where I tried to go real quick to the flat and that's a big mistake. I should have waited to see if he would have sunk back and he did not sink back. I threw it anyway, got, ended up getting pick six, but um, it was just not a good day really. And I don't know how, I really don't know how I won the game. Well, I do know I mean, defensively, we ended up forcing turnovers that ended up letting us to win the game and he missed some PATs that uh, hurt him as well. But um, again, you see the roster, we're going to go ahead and break it down real quick for you guys. So, uh, Starting out the quarterback position, again, I don't even know if I was told, but I don't know why I selected the Ravens with Flacco. I mean, I do like the Ravens team, don't get me wrong, but, I mean, the fact that Flacco was hurt uh, really hurts my team. And it's really good for the game, honestly, in Madden 
to you know be grateful for having a quarterback like Flacco who is healthy when he's healthy because these Ryan Mallets and these David Fales of the world, they're not Joe Flacco's, and that's how it is in real life. You can't just put in another quarterback and expect the same production if they're, you know, a quality quarterback. So, you know, it's cool to see how that effect, you know, takes place. But at the end of the day, I want Flacco back as fast as possible. Man, he's out five more weeks with like a broken knee or some crap. Let me see. What 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 the heck? The dislocated knee? I think it's a dislocated knee. I was like, are you kidding me? Flacco is out that dislocated knee right here for five weeks. So, God, I really hope he comes back as soon as god dang possible because I uh, can't afford to lose any games in this league. Um, but, yeah, check we'll check out the depth chart real quick. Quarterback again, Ryan Mallett. I gave him the nod over David Fales because, uh, you know, a lot of people, it's interesting. I would have expected more people to have selected the Baltimore Ravens based on the talent overall of their team. You know, one logical reason for not picking them is because a lot of their good players are older players and they won't be on their team for many more seasons. But nonetheless, they have an extremely talented uh, defense, in my personal opinion, aside from the secondary. And uh, their receiving core is phenomenal. And it just got even better for me because I ended up trading Brashad Perriman for Keenan Allen and my starting left tackle, Ronnie Stanley, because I felt fairly secure having Greg Robinson the same overall as as Ronnie Stanley uh, as my backup, so uh, that was a bit of a risk on my part, but I I was I was aiming for having, I was aiming for a vertically you know annoying and, and stretching offense uh, on my behalf because I have these great receivers at my disposal and I have a strong arm quarterback in Mallet. I felt like I could get it downfield just enough. Uh, if you look at his stats, I don't think his throw deep is very good, but he does have 94 throw power. And the 71 throw deep is really pretty bad, but I still feel like I can hit those deep comebacks with extreme precision power to the outside and get some really nice chunks of yardage and, you know, really destroy my opponent with some vertical stems concepts. But at the end of the day, uh, you know, cover three really you know, takes away a lot of that. And I should have went back to some of my more traditional concepts in the playbook that I have, which include levels and running the ball. <laughs> but you see right here, Keenan Allen, I mean, this is insane. 95 route running, 94 catch and traffic, 92 catching. Steve Smith Sr. is my second receiver. Great route running, great spec catch, unbelievable catch and traffic, great catching, and, you know, just a good player in general. I think he even has, you know, solid elusiveness, 89. That's amazing. 92 stiff arm. Are you kidding me? Jesus Christ, man. I wish Steve Smith could be on my team for four or five more years instead of probably one. I think he's going to retire after this, but... Mike Wallace offers that D threat. That's why I was able to get rid of Brashad Perriman. I felt fairly comfortable that Mike Wallace could still get the job done that Perriman can. Unfortunately, Perriman has like four plus more speed than Mike Wallace, but Wallace can still get the job done, especially in online CFM. 91 speed, 93 acceleration. That's no slouch against these cornerbacks. Kamara Aiken, again, another solid player, like 87 speed, 88 excel, the slowest out of my guys, but still has 86 catching, the third best catching rating and Davrina, fourth receiver, that's really, really good. 84 route running. He can still get the job done for me. So I'm really content with all of my receivers. And, you know, that's why I decided to go with a vertically stretching offense. And it ended up going against me because I was trying to throw deep against a cover three defense, which is exactly what the defense is designed to do against offenses. And I played right into that. Tight end wise, great players. Dennis Pitta, Benjamin Watson, Crockett Gilmore, really underrated team as a whole. The O-line's good as well. Greg Robinson, uh, John Urschel, uh, Jeremy Zada, or Zuda, how do you pronounce that guy's name? Marshall Yanda is the best right guard that we have, and obviously one of the best right guards in the league, if not the best in the league. And unfortunately, he's a little getting up there in age, but he should still be on the Ravens for a couple more years at least. Ricky Wagner, very young, and he's talented. Uh, defensively, though, man, man, these guys are really tough. Now, traditionally, I'd like to play the 4-3 four, three, four, three defense. I'm a Seahawk fan, so... Uh, you know, ironically, I end up getting destroyed by a guy who plays cover three all day. I personally like running cover three a lot as well. It's not always successful in the game, but I mean, when your opponent doesn't know how to beat it, obviously it's extremely successful, and that's uh, kind of what I've used with this Ravens defense. They have actually a four four three under set, I think, under front in their three four playbook, which is really unusual, and it's a really nice playbook. I got to be honest, one of the best three four playbooks I've seen. Uh, got a nice. A lot of nice nickel packages in there. Um, the three four fronts are solid, and if you have a talented defense, it makes it all the easier. So Jernigan is like eighty seven blockhead. 
we'll check out all the guys block shed right here in their power and their pass rush ratings because um when you got t sizzle and elvis dumerville coming off the edge things can get crazy for your opponent's offense and that's exactly what happened in my last game uh we ended up getting a lot of sacks with elvis dumerville and forced fumbles uh even this guy bjorn werner werner or whatever he has 84 block shed like i should probably trade some of these guys maybe i mean they're good for depth i guess but look, I mean, 87 block shed, 78 block shed, but 91 finesse move, 87 power move from T-Sizzle. Trent Cole, 85 finesse move is still solid. Um, Zadarius Smith, I'm trying to work him up there. Only 78 block shed, 81 power move, but he's very young. He's got a lot of time to develop. And Michael Pierce, 84 block shed is a rookie out of Stanford. Wow, that's really nice. Lawrence Guy, 83 block shed. So I think these guys are, are pretty good players. Not a crazy, I'm not block shed, but you know, when you got a 96 strength guy right here at the D tackle, that's pretty solid. So we're starting a rookie along with Brandon Williams, very young defensive tackles right there. And then on the outside, the outside linebackers, we've got a lot of, uh, you know, veteran ability in, El in Dumerville and T Sizzle. So CJ Mosley, Zachary Orr, Kam Kamalai, <laughs> Correa, whatever this guy's name is, holding it down at the third linebacker position. He's got good speed, actually. 83 speed, 87 excel, pretty nice. CJ Mosley is a monster, though. I absolutely love this guy. Again, a lot of crazy things happened in the last uh, game that I played against Oakland. He ended up getting three. I ended up getting three user interceptions with CJ Mosley, if I'm not mistaken, which is insane. Uh, right outside linebacker T Sizzle right here again. Obviously, a lot of veteran you know plays being made from his you know bargain part of the bargain. Uh, Trent Cole 6'3", 270. Wow, why is he heavier than T Sizzle? That's crazy. Zedaria Smith, 6'3", 275, or 6'4", Jesus. Uh, cornerbacks, though, secondary, definitely the weak spot of the Baltimore Ravens team. Um, you know, we don't have one standout corner. I really should press Jimmy Smith on guys. I think sometimes I'm just afraid because I'm mostly running cover three, and when he covers the deep third or one deep third of the field, I feel like he's going to get beat, but I really should press him. I don't know why uh, I don't take advantage of that, but he's got solid, you know, man and zone. Obviously, he's one of the better cornerbacks in the league not not great but pretty solid i passed it already uh um tackle rating 73 very good so you know jimmy smith 6 2 206 you'd expect that but 82 zone is man is decent 79 zone is okay and ironically my rookie has better zone than any of the cornerbacks that i have at my disposal uh sharice wright good in man not very good in zone cal errington eh, 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 they're all okay uh safeties I actually like what I have working out of the safety position. We got Kendrick Lewis, who was actually uh, much more of a thumper than uh, Ladarius Webb. But, um, you know, Ladarius Webb, ironically, is, was a former cornerback. And he, for some reason, you know, doesn't have any zone coverage ability, which is odd to me. Um, Eric Weddle, a freak as well. So really just got a lot of talented players overall, especially defensively. And it's really exciting for this team in the future for me. Especially when I get Flacco back, man. I cannot wait until I get Flacco at my disposal. But, uh, you know, definitely should be a good time in the future. That will be the conclusion of the video. Hopefully you guys enjoyed. You know, make sure to subscribe to the channel for more Madden NFL 17 content. Definitely going to be coming out with some more uh, online CFM in the future along with Madden 17 Ultimate Team. Uh, especially if you guys want anything in particular. Once again, hopefully you guys enjoyed the video. And yep, thanks for watching.